we're back more junk that probably don't need to know and don't care too much about in this here video we'll be attempting to stick that bad mamma jamma inside this less bad mamma jamma all right first things first i put these ict billet adapter plates in there those will help this uh, ls bolt right into a small block which means that i get to reuse the factory mounts now these are the factory shells but they're not the factory inserts the inserts i went with are prothane motion control they come with this little handy dandy instructions basically these are riveted together you drill the rivets out you uh, separate the plates i painted them to make them last a little bit longer you orientate this insert correctly and then you slap them back together and you bolt it up with the supplied bolts Two advantages of using these prothane mounts, three actually. First of all, my old mounts were super squishy and I don't really feel like mounting my horsepower monster over there on a tempur mattress. So this will stiffen it up a little bit, put some more power down. But two, the second advantage is that you don't lose that total comfort by going to solid motor mounts the S10 has solid motor mounts and you feel like you're experiencing roughly a category 17 earthquake when the S10 starts or idles. That may have something to do with the camshaft that has lobes taller than the Himalayan mountains. And the third thing, the factory mounts don't have metal sleeves where the bolt goes through. So these having metal sleeves makes it a lot easier to bolt up, makes it a little bit more rigid, and I think it'll just last longer in general. So kudos to Prothane for these. And Eckler's Corvette for picking up the phone when I called them. Hard to find a place that does that anymore. And they shipped them out within 10 minutes of me ordering them. So that was awesome. So I will quit jaw jacking. I will bolt these up to the ICT built plates that are on the LQ4 now. There you have it. The engine is in. Between that little time lapse and now, I took the liberties of doing some stuff you probably don't care to see. Got all the injectors in, wired up, the fuel rails together. Went ahead and got the throttle body on. I'm going with a Big Mouth 102 from Fast, as you can see. And also, while nobody was looking, I went ahead and stuck the transmission in, which you might be able to see down there. Now I would have shown you how to get the transmission in, in a tight squeeze like this, but I try to keep this channel fairly family friendly. And I gotta say, there was a lot of uh, choice words used while installing the 4L80, as it's kind of a tight fit. So, went ahead and decided to not show that part. But now that those two pieces are in, it's time to get the shifter cable installed and everything else that's gonna route through that tunnel installed so that I can get the exhaust mocked up and, and know what all I need to avoid. Two thousand years later. All right, about a decade has gone by, but here we are back in the garage. Made some progress. Figured I'd catch you up to speed. So engine's in. I know we talked about that last time. Transmission's in. Been putting some of the accessories together. We got the tranny cooler lines running here. They still need to be tied a little more out of the way so they don't melt. Got the headers on, got new spark plugs, not that you care. Got the engine oil dipstick and the tranny fluid dipstick. They're mounted up on the little bracket here. Might have to change around where this tranny fluid is mounted since you have to fill through the tranny fluid port. I realize that I cannot really fill without making sure that this hose is at a lower level. And I don't think it ever goes higher than this, but it's about the same height all the way until the uh, bell housing there. So. Don't think that'll work very good. We might try it once and find out. Got the water pump on. That was terrible. 
it was on and off about four or five times. I had these fittings down here. Um, normally these are press-in fittings. I think one's a five-eighths and one's a three-quarter hose barb. Now they were pointed straight. Obviously that's not going to work with the uh, upper control arm mount right here. So I went through a couple uh, trial and error there. First thing I tried were these guys off uh, the internet. Didn't fit. They were too big to stick out from the end of the pipe thread to that little fitting right there. Didn't fit. So I took some stainless threaded pieces, cut them at a 45, uh, pie cut them, welded them back together, tightened them in there, and it barely fits. It's actually pressing pretty hard against that, but that'll work for now. Might change that up to be a 90 or something later. And yes, these were, like I said earlier, press fit. So I had to get pipe taps and tap those fittings to half inch and three eighths. That was a little sketchy. Tapping aluminum like that, you might mess up a pump pretty quick. But if you do that, just make sure you take off the thermostat cap and vacuum all the shavings out and all that fun junk. I've got the throttle cable hooked up. Right now it's just being held on with a snap ring clip. It's kind of sketchy, but it probably won't come off. So we're gonna count on that until it fails and then we'll figure something else out. Most of the wiring on the inside is done. The cable from the shifter to the tranny is run. The tranny is wired in. I got a manual valve body controller from Jake's Performance. It's a pretty good deal on that. They shipped it out pretty quick. We'll be giving that a test, so hopefully that works out real nice. As you can see my uh, by the label right here, I've decided to make at least one of these buttons a launch control. Completely unnecessary, but, you know, got to impress, you know, the, the locals. Change the radio, not that you care. Got my Terminator X screen mounted. Can't remember if I filmed any of this before, so kind of shooting off the hip here. This center panel that goes right here is pretty much complete. Got their ignition startup panel all done. Got my fuel gauge in one of these ports. Got the super fancy Chevrolet Corvette logo hanging out right there. On the tranny, got the yoke measured. That's sent off to make a drive shaft. So all that's left after that, I believe, is to carry these headers all the way to the back. And... Uh, weld up an exhaust starting to get warm outside got the garage door open so you know what that means it's crunch time oh i got the alternator mounted up can't forget about that very important it's a uh, tough stuff alternator it's the same kind i use on the s10 and the reason i like these is because they're mini alternators as you can see it's a lot smaller than what the factory ls alternator would be and there's just not enough room for that factory one so this one fits a lot better. I had to make a little tiny bracket right here to mount it, keep it from moving too much, but no big deal. Oh, and I gotta loop the power steering together so that I don't blow power steering fluid all over the place. Other than that, we're getting quite close. I think I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, thanks for watching, appreciate it as always. Hopefully in one or two more videos, we'll have it uh, test fire and then maybe a test drive, so. I'll see you in the next one.